This is the College Gamers Podcast for October 3rd, 2015. Hello everybody, I am Mike. And I'm Taft. And this is the College Gamers. Taft, how's your week been going? It's This has been a pretty good week actually. Has it? Mine's been pretty terrible. Why so is that? Why is that? Uh, my game, the computer, is still um still out of commission because of my hard drive failure last weekend. That sucks. I've been been trying. I don't know, I'm trying to get data off of it, but at this point, I'm just kind of done and want it to be running again. So I don't have anything too important on there. So I might just replace it. Yeah. Except for that last episode we had, which was awesome. That's true. But let's not speak of the dead. Anyway, well. Um, fortunately, the, um, the drive is under a five-year warranty, so I don't have to spend $250 on a new one. That's really nice. That would suck if you had to spend that much. Well, you know, you know, you know what's worse? What? The drive, when, when I, when I, um, when it was originally bought for me, I didn't buy it, it was actually a Christmas gift, but apparently when it was bought, it was $500. It's now $250. Go. Yeah. This thing should not have failed. Technology, am I right? All right, well, uh, you want to move into the news? Might as well. Let's rock and roll. Breaking news. All right, Taff, let's get started on something that I've been anxious to talk about on the podcast all week, and it is this um, interview with GameStop CEO Paul Rains. And he believes, he, he believes, he said, and he said in this, in this interview... Disc-based games will be around forever, um, he said, and this is the continuation of the quote. The market has seen physical music sales down by 50% and m- movie sales down by 60%, but he believes that that video games will not follow this route. I disagree in the fact that it won't follow that route. I mean, I'm sure eventually we're, we are going to see drops in physical disc sales and stuff like that. But I do agree 100% that physical disc will be around for as long as we have consoles, pretty much, that 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 have the option to do physical disc, you know? I gotcha. And, okay, I, I think we'll always have physical discs. There, yeah. there will always be people who want to collect the physical collector's edition of a disc. Exactly. I'm, I hate buying digital things. I'd rather buy the disc okay but here's my thing i don't believe that physical stores will be around forever really i think because uh, i did the math and he talked about um digital sales make up 948 million of the 9.3 billion dollars that gamestop made in 2014 yeah that's only 9.8 percent of the revenue came from digital sales that means if 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 sales continue to move into digital, you know, the Xbox Live Marketplace, the PSN uh, network, that was redundant, um, Steam. If it continues to move this way, less than 10% of your revenue is not enough to keep, you know, physical stores open. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that, but still, physical stores will always be around there's no way that it won't i mean we still have shops around that still sell only vinyl for music and stuff like that it's never going to be to where one type of store is going to be out of business i mean never what about blockbuster are any blockbusters still around no but there are still movie stores that are owned by like mom and pop shops there's not necessarily going to be any big giant ones but i mean we we see like that was a rental place, not some place to buy something. Like Redbox is a lot easier and a lot cheaper. That was the whole thing. Digital pr- digital prices are the same as they are in stores. This is true, but you know, Blockbusters aren't around, but you can still get, go buy things from Target, Walmart. Exactly, but I mean, like I said, Blockbuster was a rental place. I mean, it's kind of a different, it's a different ballpark for rentals versus buying stuff. Wouldn't you agree? This is true. This is very true. Renting. I mean. Yeah, but also, okay, one thing with digital games is that you can't, tra- you, when you're done with them, you can't trade them in. Exactly, and which is another reason why I like my physical copies. This, this is true, this is true. But, yeah, I just, 
you know, if if I'm gonna get a physical copy of a game, I'm not gonna go to the store. I'll I'll go to Amazon or something. Really, prime, prime two day shipping, man. I know, but my favorite thing about going to the store is just seeing like I may go in like I'm gonna get Metal Gear, but by the time I leave, I'm like I've got Metal Gear one, two, three, four, and both fives. That's true. And, you know, you can't replace that atmosphere of walking into a GameStop or a gaming store. Or and just, like, the customer service. I mean, sometimes you get really bad customer service. But then you walk in there, and I can spend, like, an hour in there just talking to the guy behind the counter about video games like I do right here. Yeah, I can't get that from Amazon. So I just thought it was interesting. You know, he I don't know I don't know what he his reasoning is, but, he I don't, you know, he thinks that physical stores will be around forever. And... I guess they'll they will they'll never truly die, but I I think I I don't think I don't think they're gonna be around, but they're gonna be as important as they are now. Yeah, they won't probably be around as in, uh, as much density. They'll still be around, just not as often, you know. Instead of like having like seven game stops within a ten block radius, yeah, there's gonna be like two. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. Well, moving on, Taft, did you hear um, Call of Duty live tweeted a fake terrorist attack? I heard about that, but I didn't I didn't get to look much at it. Apparently, they were live tweeting a attack, uh, like some sort of explosion at Marina, see, Marina Bay, Singapore. So, apparently it, it's it's like supposed to take place, that's like where the game takes place or how um how the, you know, the game starts. Um a tweet this is, this is a, it has a picture of a tweet here. Uh, breaking news. Unconfirmed reports are coming in of an explosion on the north bank of, uh, of the Singapore Marina. So, oh, Marina. That's what that word is. Derp. So, Tav, do you think this is good, bad, like, idea? I guess there's no such thing as bad publicity. That's that true. Word. But you know, in this in this in this day and age of people being hyper aware of like terrorism and you know tweets of such, I think it was possibly the dumbest thing I've ever seen a company do. Like it's true that and, was terrible. But I mean, like I said, I guess just you can look at it nowadays. Is there is no such thing as bad publicity. Like I mean, Britney Spears shaved her head and only got popular more popular. This is true. You know, it's I I guess that's kind of the way they're doing it. But you know, it's still if you to do that kind of thing on purpose is kind of a jerk move. I don't think they intended to do it like that, but I, I mean, just, you can kind of take the spin off of that. I mean, what 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 else do you expect talking about, you know, tweet, tweeting about something like that? I think maybe since they, I mean, it's under Call of Duty. I mean, I don't really go to Call of Duty to, you know, get my terrorist attack, attack news, you know? That's true. But actually, during the events, they changed their Twitter account to something that resembled a real news source no they did like they oh changed they changed the logo they changed the background picture they changed the name to current events aggregate like uh, it looks it looks official it looks i have official. no clue what they were thinking when they did this yeah i don't I, I don't know i guess i guess they're really trying to put a big spin on the game but are you excited for black ops 3 i'm kind of excited for the zombies There's, i think that's what everyone plays before y- yeah like i've i've lost like i'm tired of the future warfare stuff yeah they need to go back to like you know they not modern warfare but if they can make something again that's more modern day that'd be cool yeah like i'm totally down for like another modern warfare style like with guns that are actually real that'd be nice or like ones that i'd I'd love to see them go back to world war ii they did world war ii so so well but don't you think world war ii is kind of played out right now I think what's happened is we've gotten our fill of both modern and future. And I so see. it's going to be going back will be a nice refreshing. Like we can, it's still one of those things like you alternate between it or even go somewhere as like, early, I think it'd be really kind of funny to go back to like the le- like constant lever actions of like World War One and stuff like that. You that know? would be interesting. Me and Alec one time played a game. It was a Civil War game. Yeah. Like with muskets and stuff. It was it was put on by the History Channel and it was a it was a fun game. It wasn't like triple A or anything, but it oh, was gosh. a very fun game. I forgot History Channel made video games. I think they made like four. <laughs> I forgot they did that. That's hilarious. All right, well you wanna take yeah. the reins for a second? Yeah, I guess uh with my transition shall be going off of bad publicity, if I could get that word out properly. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Publicity. There you go. Say it with me, Taff. Publicity. Publicity. There you go. Um, 
the publishers <laughs> of uh, Deus Ex a while back were talking about how they were giving like uh, pre-order incentives. Yeah. Did have you? Did you hear about that? Um, I did not. Would you like to inform me? I will. Okay. They said for a certain number of global pre-orders, um, they would give away a DLC for like the lowest rank for I don't know what it was. Then the next one, they'd give away uh like uh actually I'm sorry, it's all DLC, but like they'd give away a, a DLC of like a in-game costume as like the lowest rank, and then next would be like soundtracks, and then later would be like missions. And then the final one, the if once if they got to like the highest tier, which is, I think was like I think it was like five thousand pre orders, ten thousand pre orders. Yeah. Something like that. Worldwide. Or it could have been something stupid big. But um they would actually release the game four days early. Okay. Well, not many people were too happy about this, like including myself. Even though like they got to the highest tier. Yeah. From from what I heard, I wasn't positive. Well, five thousand to ten thousand, that's I feel like that's not a very big number when you talk about pre orders. I feel like it's more than what I'm thinking. I think like maybe I'm, five million, maybe. Maybe I don't maybe. know if it was that big. I mean, Deus Ex is a is a popular game. I don't know if it's that popular. Though. I I gotcha. Um, like that'd be like for like a Halo game or something like that. I feel like a a, a big AAA title. Exactly. Um, but they from what I heard they got to the highest tier, but um, there was just a ton of bad publicity. <laughs> I swear. What are words? <laughs> I can't. I can't say that word. It's like curriculum. Oh my gosh! I just said that. Or oh wow! That's literally the first time I've ever tried to say that word and said it right. The college gamers, where life changing events happen, miracles happen here. <laughs> uh there was a ton of bad publicity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just not even gonna try it. Um, uh, surrounding this, and not too many people were happy about it, and so. Um, they've come back and they said, you know what? Forget it. We're going to release all this stuff with with anybody who pre-orders the game. It doesn't okay. matter if we m- meet it or not. Everything is going to come out. Well, that, that, that kind of makes sense because if you don't reach some of those goals, that's just like waving them around in your face. Exactly. You know, here's, what, here's what you could have, but oh, you didn't make it. We're yeah. sorry. Exactly. Like how, if they didn't make the goal, just like how much hate that company would get. And Square exactly. Enix with another ga- big game coming out in Kingdom Hearts 3 yeah does not need to especially one like Kingdom Hearts 3 which is already going to have a huge following but if people got mad at them oh yeah for something like that I guess I can kind of see where they're coming from if they were like well if you have incentives people will tell their friends to pre-order it and we'll get you know a bunch of people coming yeah I, I can see where I can see where they got the idea I just don't think it was a good one it, a good concept for uh, execution for, there, yeah. yeah Um, but yeah so they're giving you everything when you pre-order no matter what, if, or if you just get a day one version, because you can get those if you just go in on the first day that it's out. Yeah. Um, and the final release date that they have specified, and this is it, is going to be uh, February 23rd, 2016. All right. Well, Tafts, um, apparently uh, Arkham Knight is going to be uh, open, opened up on Steam again at the end of this month. And you know what type of feedback they've gotten? <laughs> Nothing but negative. Negativity everywhere, which I don't exactly understand why aren't people just happy that they're finally releasing the game because it probably won't get released <laughs> that's that's true uh apparently um the comments are all middle fingers um so again it's the end of this month so you know they're probably gonna patch it again i'm assuming probably yeah and uh people are saying that they want like s- some sort of like free dlc for like as you know as like a peace offering uh yeah i can agree with the people like consumers and stuff with that one i mean do you think it's fair they're getting the game how many months late three or four yeah i feel like you should get some kind of like okay you bought the game three or four months ago and it did not work properly on our end it was our fault mm. give them something like i'm sorry for this like doesn't even necessarily be a huge dlc just something tiny skins or something character or like the harley quinn pack that they gave away for the pre-order yeah that was like a 20 minute mission was it yeah give them something like that i mean i gotcha like a short short thing exactly i gotcha that that that, that makes sense i mean it's only like it's only fair to the people who bought the game you know mm, that's true they and you know they probably none of them have played it at all 
because of like difficulty or do you you probably could have played it i think because it was like really like choppy frame rate and stuff but it was probably like a you know undesirable experience yeah probably taff did you ever play um stanley parable i did not but i watched many a youtuber play it and what'd you think I thought the game was hilarious. It was hilarious. I I bought it, played it. Um, I tried everything. You know, I tried all the all the um different ways you could go. My only disappointment was that there wasn't actually a lot of different ways to end the game. No, I mean there were like how many were there? I think like fifteen, maybe. Yeah. It, hey, wait, real quick. I just remember this. You know how like you walk around the entire place and nobody's there. Yeah. Uh. There's one way I forget exactly how to do it because it's not super complicated but slightly complicated. Okay. Where if you walk into like the after you walk out of your office and you walk into another room, you can see one person leaving. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I saw that. It was creepy. <laughs> yeah, they're like I think they're they look like a Half Life model, some kind of thing. I don't know. They resembled one. Probably. I mean, the, the original the original game was a Half Life Two mod. Really? As everything ever is. I know, right? It's like Half Life is like the father of all video games, but he's making um another game called The Beginner's Guide, which you know if you couldn't guess is a first person narrative and exploration game. So it doesn't sound that different to the Stanley Parable, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Yeah, I mean as long as it's as long as it's um unique, like as long as it's not like just like the Stanley Parable two, I'm okay with that. And uh, he th- he um it's gonna be a uh, VR game. So VR becoming very popular, which oh that reminds me, um, GameStop um in the article we were talking about at the beginning of the show, GameStop wants to become the place for VR. How do they plan on doing that? Like by having like demos and things in their stores. Okay, I could see it. Which which is like it, it reminds me of Best Buy. Like if I, if I, you know you go to Best Buy to try something out, if you like it, you go home and order it on Amazon for cheaper. Yeah. So that's a, that's a, that's what reminds me of uh it's going to be the it's going to be the best buy of video games. I could see it. Um but yeah, I just hope for this new game they have a uh, the same narrator. That dude's voice is magic. Oh, it is. It's it's like it's like a smooth pudding. Just not tapioca. It's not tapioca. Tapioca's kind of good. Uh. <laughs> okay, so um on the topic of older games, I guess we could go with that one. All right. Is uh, one of my favorite games, especially uh, like of like last year, Titanfall. Titanfall, such a good game. A wonderful game. That is the one first-person shooter I will brag about how good I am at that game. I was very good at that game. Uh, but uh, Respawn Entertainment is the guy who it's not the guy, the company that made it, and that was their very first game that they ever made. And uh, that was the very first game they that ever is made. The first game they ever made. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, and um, it just hit ten million people. Ten million. Wow. Ten million like people playing it currently, or like ten million like uh units bought. They did not specify. Ah, okay. <laughs> they just okay. uh, they didn't say if it's like ten million people playing or if it's just they've sold ten million units. Or wow, that was such a good game. It was, and it, I feel like it led the way a lot with uh advanced warfare for like you know how they had the double jump and the wall runs yeah i feel like it led the way with that a lot i was watching a video on the people on like it was like behind the scenes making of it and there was this one guy part of their team who has a chair with like one half of the keyboard is on the like the sides of the the keyboard is split in half and then placed on the side of the chair so he just leans back and types code on it what it looks super sweet (laughs) that sounds so weird it looks super sweet uh but okay, yeah, I just wanted to toss that in there real quick. But uh, another thing I'd like to talk about is my favorite topic, All Star right. Wars Battlefront. Ah, it's got to be something Star Wars at least once a week. Yeah, I mean, it's me. Yeah, that's true. I, speaking of which, with my lightsabers that come in on Tuesday, I'm super pumped. Congratulations. I'm going I'm to I'm post a picture of them on my Twitter. Are they like model lightsabers do they like durable fighting lightsabers they're durable fighting lightsabers okay because like you have other lightsabers that are like really cheap and flimsy but they look nice yeah they're the model ones and this one's an actual durable one it's made out of like uh aircraft titanium and like nice uh, like super hard polymer plastic for the blade that's nice yeah well the blades was the base of the blades we have to worry about yeah and it's it's and 
it's connected in there for like three inches into the blade is where like the blade is three inches into the handle. So yeah. it's a good connection there. there. Nice. So, yeah, I'm super pumped about it. But back to video games, because we digress here. Um, the Battlefront beta is coming out next week. Next week? Thursday, October 8th. Oh, I gotta get my computer working. Yeah, you better get on that, Mike. Uh, but, uh, the big thing I want to talk about is apparently the survival mode that they're gonna have is not gonna be offline play. It's not gonna be offline? Yeah. That, I guess that kind of makes sense. If you had to have a team of people, they might not have AIs for it. No, you don't have to have, it's you and like your friends or you by yourself sitting there oh. going off against hordes oh there's not there's not a requirement of like four people not that i know of and i'm it didn't say anything about a requirement oh i see yeah that's that's weird it, yeah. but there is a single player option yes it's like um at least it didn't specify that it could and it did specifically say at one point that you could play by yourself or you, you can play split screen but you yeah. still have to be connected to the internet that's odd maybe some of the maybe some of the things are um server you know on the server side what I'm thinking is since it's a beta, yeah. they're trying to like kind of track it, I guess. But why only one game mode? Uh, the rest of them are, are you have to play with other people. There are people on the other team. I see. This okay. one is one team versus the computer. I see. So, yeah. Okay. Um, The survival mode is going to be uh, set in Tatooine, which is going to be really cool. Isn't it everything? Uh, either Hoth or Tatooine. Yeah, it's either Hoth or Tatooine, <laughs> but the the survival mode is specifically set in Tatooine. I see. Uh, that's the only one you can play, and like I said, you can play online online with friends or local split screen, which I'm super pumped about. I've said pumped like six times this episode. <laughs> I am super excited about the, uh, being able to do split screen. That's, I'm going to come over. We're going to have to play together. I will probably be hitting this beta up, so. Nice. Although, I work... Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm sorry. And then I'm going to the 13th gate on Saturday. But it's still be there on Sunday. So Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the other two game modes that are available in the beta mm-hmm. are uh, the 40-player Walker Assault. Walker? I'm assuming that's going to be Hoth? Uh, I would imagine. Because of Walkers? I don't think they were used. I mean, in the movies, you kind of see one on Indoor. Yeah, you see, you see them other places, but you never see them in action. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna assume that it's gonna be on Hoth. I mean, with the two options that we have to play for the betas, Hoth and Tatooine. I see. And then the other one is Drop Zone. Ah, uh, Drop Zone. Drop Zone is what I'm excited for. Yeah, it seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun. You know, you know, I feel like they could also have Walkers on Tatooine. That would that would probably shake things up a little bit. They could definitely because I mean it's a very open area. It is. It would you know. I guess on tat, the walkers might need a very large map, and on Tatooine, I don't know what type of natural barriers you could have to keep players in the in the zone. From what I've seen, oh, not seen, but heard about the games and stuff like that, mm. each planet has a small, medium, and large map. That's awesome. Yes, but that was I heard about that a long time ago, so I could be misinterpreting it, but I'm pretty sure that I'm correct. Large maps are the best. I like my small maps. I really do. Do you? I like the large maps because it gives me more options to attack and like counter and you know flank people. But like Rust and Call uh, Modern Warfare Two, I was deadly at that one. Oh yeah, walking Rust. around with a uh, like the Famous or something like that. Is anything that had a very large hit zone, like a, a very a very large spread and shot really fast, you would just murder everyone. I had uh, I would do, um. Like the famous, I was I was pretty decent with the famous actually. The famous is pretty good. Yeah, and then um, the Akibo Ranger double yeah. oh uh, double yeah. barrel, I would wreck shop with those. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I have a very long string of Fallout articles, so let's talk about Fallout Four, Taft. No, um, I don't want to talk about Fallout no one, Four. Don't no want to talk about Fallout Four. No. Get over it. <laughs> so. For those of you who have, you know, smaller hard drives and don't have like, you know, Samsung's 16 terabyte drive, you shouldn't have to worry about Fallout 4's install size. Um, Fallout 4 is looking to be 28.12 gigabytes on the Xbox One, which is, it's pretty small for an open world game because GTA 5 was almost 50 gigabytes. 
Speak English. Okay. I'm, well, I'm just messing. I got it. <laughs> Fallout 4 is half the size of GTA, which is pretty awesome. Not even. Wait, how many? How many you said it was 12? Oh, no, it's 28. 28. So, oh, okay. So it's, it's a little over halfway. Okay, I don't know why I heard 12. So, But actually, if you look at the game sizes for Bethesda's past games... The, the 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 file sizes have actually been shrinking like over time so you know for those of you who worry about it you know you should be good just delete um fa- gta and replace it with fallout 4 i feel like that's a fair trade that's a very fair trade you probably have less curse words e- mm, yeah probably wasn't gta like bad about cursing Yes. I know in general they're bad, but I thought GTA 5 was worse than usual. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of the N-word. Did and, they? Yeah, because, I mean, uh, Franklin and Lamar said it to each other all the time. And uh, I see. One, one time Trevor said it and almost got just beaten up and it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Fallout 4 is coming out soon, right? Correct. So that means everyone making Fallout New Vegas mods are rushing to get them out. And this week, a very large mod came out called um, Autumn Leaves, which is a, it's a it's a mod, like I said, for Fallout New Vegas. It's it's quite large, has over two thousand lines of uh, voice dialogue and its own soundtrack, multiple endings, um, seven to ten hours of gameplay. It's a decent sized mod. Why didn't the dude just make his own video game? <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know. Um, I watched the trailer for it and it looks pretty cool. So it's about before the bombs fell, um, th- these, these rich people of high, you know, they have high political power and stuff. They made a vault to store the world's, you know, art, science, you know, information for the future when we would need it again, for when civilization would once again be able to use it. And they're, they're in the middle of making this vault. All, you know, this, it's just, um, this group of rich people, they're out, they're trying to collect everything when the bombs fell earlier than they expected. And one guy is left in the vaults and he builds robots to, to keep him company who are able to think and talk to him. And apparently after that, they're like, and then, you know, it was 200 years. So there's time for something to go wrong and it cuts off. So you don't know what happened inside. They went crazy. Well, there was only one guy, so I'm assuming only he went crazy. Or the robots. I was talking about the robots. Oh, the robots probably went crazy. I hope they're like the robots from Old World Blues. Is that are, you know, like how like in a uh, Halo, like spoiler real quick, and if you haven't been around Halo Four ever, um, <laughs> you know how Cortana goes crazy. Yes, and um, if they make an AI kind of like that, I mean, it's that's a general rule for AIs. It's not just the Halo universe that AIs have a degeneration eventually. So, 200 years seems like a pretty decent degeneration period. Yeah, if I ran my computer for 200 years, I don't think it'd be holding up so well. Yeah, so, I mean, that'd be really cool to see. Yeah, and it looks pretty good. And, you know, the fact that people are making these crazy mods just make me more excited for Fallout 4. Because you know people are going to make mods like this for Fallout 4. Uh, I'm And I'm so excited. I was going to say pumped. I'm so <laughs> excited because um, Xbox and stuff is going to now be able to use the mods. Yeah, but we don't know if you're able to make mods, right? Probably not be able to make them, but we can use them, and that's all that really matters. That's true. That's true. Well, continuing with Fallout Four, um, you can you can pre-order the uh, season pass for thirty dollars, and there is um Fallout Four Digital Deluxe bundle for ninety dollars on the Xbox Marketplace. But you can, um. Fallout 4 DLC is now available to pre-order on the Xbox One. So, yeah, I don't think they know what it's going to be yet, but mm. you can buy it. Yeah, that's still kind of weird. For everyone out there who likes to gamble, please um stand up. Please stand up. Oh, the real pl- uh, Slim Shady, please stand up. Please stand up. You're one at the principal's office. All right, and the last thing for Fallout 4, um, some crazy Canadian dude... um made a fallout shelter in the bottom of in, in his basement of his house so he, here, here's the background for this taft <clears throat> i gotta get my get my story voice ready um it's not any different than my usual voice so this guy built the house for him and his wife right and he builds the house and he, there's a basement in it and the wife says you built the house you can have the basement which is you know she gets the rest of the house of course yeah, of course 
of course. So what he does is that he has a he has a, a gaming theater in the basement. So he builds a wall in the middle, like through the basement, like paints and everything, and he puts a Fallout Shelter vault door on there. That is the coolest thing I've ever heard of. A Canadian it's, has to be a lumberjack because he built a house. Actually, he's an IT guy. No, at a local school. That's and he built a house. He, I don't. I don't know. This guy's like a jack of all trades or something. For real, the so, lumberjack. So, um, the door. Yeah, let's see, so he built it by hand for four hundred dollars. It opens and closes by hands. And the weighs about 100 pounds. Canadian lumber jack. <laughs> so I would love to have a vault door in, in a basement, which I don't have. I want a basement in general. Basements we, sound awesome. We live in Louisiana. Our basements would be constantly flooded. Or just be an underground pool. Which sounds like a pretty cool idea. Yeah, we need to do this now. You've convinced <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound like you need a lot of convincing. So yeah, Taff, would you replace your front door with a vault, a vault door? Uh, if it weighed less than a hundred pounds, because I'm kind of a scrawny dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it sounds like fun. I don't know if it would stop anyone unless they're kind of weak. You could just bar it. That's true. You could just bar it. So that's, that's true. We, I mean, we deadbolt doors. I mean, I feel like the deadbolt's a lot easier to break through than a whole bar. This is true. This is true. All right, you got anything, Taff? Uh, my last piece of news right here All for right. this week is about another one of my favorite topics, Hitman. Hitman. I'm so sorry about being delayed, by the way. I know. It's it's upsetting. It's sad. I cry myself to sleep at night. Oh, it's okay. Um, But they have announced the official release date and what will be coming with it at launch. What is the release date? The is release date for the digital version. They have not released the release date for the physical version, only for the digital version. Is it going to be different? That's strange. Yeah, they're different. It's seeming like they're going to be different because they have not said anything about the physical. That's quite strange. Yeah, I know. Different I, different days. I don't like it because, like I was saying earlier, I like to buy my physical disc. I got you. But um, the release date for the digital version is March 11th, 2016. Maybe they're having issues like... Making the discs? I don't, I don't. I have no idea what, what, why they would have some incentive to make the digital version come out sooner. I mean, we're we're assuming it's sooner. It's possible it could come later, which doesn't quite make sense because you don't you don't have as much logistics with with uh with digital versions. Yeah, I just don't see why they wouldn't release them on the same day. That's yeah. I'll, I I just I don't know why they wouldn't do that. Yeah, I mean it's 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 mind boggling. Yeah. Okay, so uh what comes in it is uh three maps, uh Paris, uh Sapinza, Sapinza and uh Mara Ke- uh Kesha. All right, thank you for trying to uh yeah. pronounce those tasks. I got one um so uh, only only three maps. I'm assuming they're going to be quite large. Yes. Uh three maps uh, six campaign missions total. Six? Yeah. Are they long? T- together they make six campaign missions. I'm assuming. I mean, six is not very much. If you told if you told me this, like if you, if you just explained that to me, with if I I didn't know that was for a console or something, it sounds like a really small game. Yeah. Um. But they're all replayable apparently, and. The thing, the thing that I think they're banking on for the fact that it's not as many missions is their new uh, thing that they're adding in, their contracts system. System, like people can do like online contracts. From what I understand of what it is, is you see some dude in a blue shirt, and you're like, I don't like that dude. I'm gonna put a contract on his head, and so somebody can go online and see like okay that's the dude i want to kill that's blue shirt man exactly and so they could go to kill him in some creative way can you put contracts out on players i'm assuming i doubt it because i don't know if you if there's a multiplayer online oh i see no but it's like other npcs on the mission area you know i see i see well that I don't know. I have a I have a certain thing about games that rely on the community to keep it alive. Yeah, I don't like them. 
Yeah, because like there, there's this game I was interested in on Steam. I forget what it was called. It was like it was some airship like battle game, and it looked really cool. But but I didn't want to get it because apparently no one else played it. So there's no there's no purpose of getting the game. So if they're, if they're banking for on everyone making content for the game themselves, I, I feel like that doesn't that can either go really well and make the game you know, like make the game longev like make the game's longevity you know better or I don't know what I'm saying. Or it's gonna like kill it prematurely. Yeah, they said uh, they have around eight hundred targets, like possible people you could target. I see. So you can't just like target a random Joe on the street. I think together it's probably around like eight hundred people on each map. I see. And so uh, there's that, which could be kind of interesting mm. to find out some like really creative ways. Um, but then they said after the initial launch, they're gonna release uh, and they're gonna release more sandbox locations per uh one per month during april may and june that's gonna be cool and so each, these are sandbox maps you said yes and um every one except for the last one absolution yeah they were sandbox well even absolution was kind of sandboxy but it had a very kind of corridory feel to it yeah um they've all been like you can walk around do whatever you want in those maps just kill this one dude any way you can i see and so that's what they're going to be like and uh each one of these maps is going to have their own missions their own like fancy types of kills and other people that you can add to the list of people you can target for contracts i see that's that's exciting that they're adding it i wonder why they're not i wonder why they're not adding them all in at the same time it's possible that like because it was delayed like only recently right yeah and they said that um the reason that they delayed it was so that they could one get more content out at launch, okay, and then two so that they're like really like the DLC that they released later could be released more frequently. I'm I'm wondering maybe they were they were developing the game and maybe they ran across something that 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 was that was like faulty and now they have to go back and fix some of it. I don't know because. Because they want to release more at launch, right? And a total of six games? I mean, maps or three? Six campaign missions is what they said. With three maps? Yeah, so two each. That still doesn't, that still doesn't seem like a lot for, for a delay. Like, if they were, if they were to delay it for content, I think they would add all of those in. Yeah, I mean, I, it seems like too little for me. So, like, I was going to get this game right when it came out, but reading this is like, I'm gonna wait till the price drops. Why wouldn't they just release all those maps at once? That's a great question. Very, very strange. Well, is that all you got? That's it for me. That's it. All right. Well, I got one last thing here. Um, PS Vita successor unlikely. So, Taff, did you do you have a PS Vita? I did. I actually enjoyed it. Did you? I did. It was. I, it was fun. Was it? Was it? Well. Um, I don't, um, PlayStation doesn't think they're going to be making another one. So, which is, which is understandable because nowadays mobile gaming market is just dominated by phones. Yeah, I agree with that. But I mean, in my opinion, nothing beats a handheld. I hate playing video games on my computer. That's true. But you know, there are phones out there that they're, they're gaming phones. I said computer. I meant phone. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> But, I mean, still, it's not the same, you know? Like, I like the feel of buttons, and I like the feel of the joysticks and stuff. that the, Or at least the directional pad. I like to feel the click of the button. That's true. Like, you know, if you're playing a game on my... If I'm playing a game on my iPhone, and I have to use, like, a, an analog stick on screen, I can't feel it, so sometimes when I panic and go for it, I miss it and, like, screw up. Exactly. But you know, if if everyone's playing on playing on their phones, then you know, you, you can either buy if you want if you want to you know game mobily, you already have a phone. You know, there's less of an incentive to go out and buy another three hundred dollar, two hundred dollar device to play mobily. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know about you, but my phone dies so fast just looking at things like iFunny or playing Fallout Shelters. Fallout Shelters takes away like a bad a, a like two battery percent per minute almost. Like it's ridiculous. Well, maybe you should stop playing Fallout Shelters because I can't play it. I have actually stopped playing it recently. I've yeah. got, I, I got my goal. I'm done. Oh, uh, whatever. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, I just, I, I don't think I'm going to miss it. I have, like, the original PSP, so it's like a brick. Yeah, I saw that sitting on your shelf over there earlier, and I was looking at that. Like, I can't carry it in my pocket unless I have a concealed weapons uh, license. Yeah. Like, it's a decent chunk of brick. Yeah, but the the Vita wasn't too bad. I I was able to carry it around in my pocket, and it I, not to be too bad. I never actually saw the Vita. I'm assuming because it, it was, like, download only, right? No, that was the P. Uh, that was the PS Go. Oh, okay. Also had one of those, and that was the biggest piece of junk I <laughs> ever owned. Why? Why was that? Um, just it was on, download only. The it had terrible internet. At least mine did. It had terrible internet connectivity. Um, it just it wasn't comfortable in your hand. It just wasn't a wasn't a good system in my opinion. I got you. I'm assuming the only got smaller. No, actually, the, no? They, they, the PS Go was, was pretty significantly small, and I think they got a lot of like heat for how small it was and how bad it felt in your hand. I see. So they went and got, uh, they went to the Vita, which was slightly larger, not significantly, but it was larger, and um, it felt a lot better in the hand, you know, because it's nice to have a little bit of weight in the hand. I gotcha, I gotcha. All right, well, that's all the news for this week. You want to move on? Let's do it. Let's do it. What you playing? <laughs> All right. Well, this week, um, yeah, I my computer's been out of commission as I keep talking about here. So I haven't had too much, you know, in the in the way of gaming. I've managed to fit in a few Here's the Storm games, which is I I'll be playing it. And occasionally, this hits me that this game is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's me when I'm playing. Uh. Skyrim or Metal Gear, but mainly Skyrim. I'll just be sitting there walking through Skyrim like, oh, I love this game. You know what was super sad right before my game? My computer uh, crapped out on me. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> right before my computer died on me, I was actually downloading um, the Skyrim HD um, um, DLC. You poor child. So as soon as as soon as I get as soon as I get it running up and running again, I'm going to download that because now my now my graphic card can like play that beautifully. Okay, Bethesda, I know you're listening to this because why wouldn't you listen to this podcast? I mean, exactly. We talk about you guys all the time. We love you. <laughs> Bring Mary us to us. your studio. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but we know you're listening. So uh, go ahead and start announcing and letting us know that you're working on a next Elder Scrolls game that's not Elder Scrolls Online. Please. We know that you're done with Fallout 4. It could be released right now. You just don't want to do it. Just You know what? You know what? You know Elder Scrolls, um, Fallout. You know, you can release Fallout like just like just ha- this like you know half done. You know, you don't need to completely fix it and just start working on Skyrim in the next Elder Scrolls right now. I 100% agree with that. Let's do that. Why not? What could go wrong? Exactly. I mean, it's not not like they haven't already said that Fallout's done. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much done. Let's just you know Elder Scrolls it. Elder Scrolls up right now. Exactly. Come on. So yeah, Heroes great. Um. You know when I when I can actually play it. I've been kind of busy this week with school and stuff. Um, Taft, you really need to download it so we can play it together. I might. It's just really hard to play games and stuff on my computer because one, it's a MacBook. Two, it's a MacBook Air. <laughs> and three, when I play games on it like Minecraft, yeah. they're like it's about to catch fire. Oh gosh! I suggest you get an actual uh, computer. Uh, that's expensive. That's expensive. Oh, oh wait, I forgot money. Exactly. I forgot. I don't. I don't have that thing people call currency. Yeah. So what have you been playing this week, Taft? Uh, I have been playing a. T- I, Mike, you know how your computer's been broken. Yeah. I did you a solid. Okay. And I played enough Metal Gear for both of us. Thank you, Taft. That you're, means so much to me. You're welcome. <laughs> that game is so fun, but I probably had the most aggravating experience in video games. I've ever had in my entire probably like I'm about to be 20 so probably like 13 years of being like a gamer. Okay, so when you say bad experience, do you mean like it was a really tough mission or that the software to like just like wasn't working for you? Neither. It was a super easy mission. Nothing went wrong with it. <laughs> okay. Just it should have been a 5 minute mission. Maybe 10 turned into an entire 45 minutes of me trying just, it was aggravating. Were you trying to find the goat? No. Did you find the goat? I still have not found the goat. That goat. 
if anybody's found the goat, please tweet us. Tell us where the goat is. Yes, please. Um, but no. So, uh, big bad guy. Um, made a big bad robot. Okay. And big bad robot was hunting me down as I'm trying to extract some dude who's very important. Okay. Um, so I'm carrying him. Spoiler alert, by the way. Yeah. There's a giant robot in the game. Oh, shocker. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, you never know what's going on in this game. There are I, fire people. We saw, we saw the, we talked about how the. It's in the trailer. Main, that and, yeah, and the main bad guy got picked up by the robot. We've already talked about that. I mean. Yeah, that's true. But, um, it's a different big bad robot, I'm pretty sure, though. Oh, well, oh, okay. He's not as big. Okay. Um. That's good. Yeah, so, uh, tiny big bad, big bad robot. Uh, I'm carrying this dude, aw- carrying this dude away, and he's on my shoulder. So I'm running away from him, running in this thing called a walker. It's like kind of like Star Wars walker, except for not as tall. Okay. Um. So I'm in that thing, and I'm carrying him, and then big bad robot steps in front of me, and like breaks my walker in a cutscene. So I have to run to the helicopter. Okay. Which will not land until this robot has not seen me. Oh, that sounds annoying. Yeah, and so what would happen is I set down the guy I was carrying, put him in a safe spot. Good idea. And hid, and the robot lost me. Okay. After like 30 seconds. I was like, okay, super easy, no big deal. Okay. I pick up the dude and start going towards the helicopter. The robot somehow sees me. (laughs) <laughs> don't know how but he saw me I was like okay, okay. I mean not too bad he is a big robot exactly it was understandable I mean I wasn't too far away from him so I understood this goes on for another 25 minutes hiding and then being found again yep oh my gosh and I get so aggravated I run halfway across the mission area that's a, that's a lot of space not the whole map but, I know, like but the like... mission area yeah it's still a decent chunk of it was territory. Pro- it was probably like a five minute straight sprint. That's yeah, that's that's boring in a video game. Yeah, and so maybe not, maybe over halfway, and I hide. He follows me like he's right on my tail the entire time, basically. So, oh, but you let him away exactly. Ah, crafty. And then so I hid. Okay, got away from him. He didn't see me. I started to crawl away. Okay, I crawl around a mountain. I physically cannot see him. Okay. Can't even hear him at this point. There's a there's literally a mountain between us. Okay. So I get up and I sprint towards the helicopter trying to get away. Well, lo and behold, guess who comes sprinting around the mountain when she comes? Oh, no. <laughs> the robot somehow heard me sprinting. Oh, my gosh. That's that's a, that's obnoxious. And they like, came and found me, and I just said, screw it. Almost turned off my computer. <laughs> but I just I ducked down. He didn't see me. Okay. Did you wait? Did you actually finish the mission? I or? did. I did. Okay. Good. Good. I ducked down. I, I got on my stomach. Went prone. He didn't see me. He started walking away, and I just crawled for like ten minutes to where the helicopter was. Grabbed the dude and was got up and started walking <laughs> to get to the helicopter. I made it to the helicopter, but big old bad robot heard me walking. <laughs> Came sprinting around the corner just as I was putting the dude on the helicopter and getting out of there. That's hilarious. And the only reason he didn't see me was because there was me. There was a helicopter between us. Like that's fantastic. I was so mad. Did you get him with the minigun on the way out? I did. Nice. It, yeah, I just blew it up. I was like, nope, you're done. Like, <laughs> I hate you. Tab, do you use the night vision? I used to not. But I do quite a bit now, especially now that I've upgraded it. Do you? Because I find it to be kind of a piece of junk. Because it's not dark enough in that game to, that I feel like I have that like I have some sort, of, some sort of advantage using it. I use it during sandstorms. It works with sandstorms. Yes, it's uh, it's not so much night vision as is like thermal vision. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. I'll have to use that next time. Also, a pro tip here: during sandstorms, take off your suppressor. Really? Oh, because they can't hear they it. They can't hear you, in it, so that way you don't wear down your suppressor. You know, I find that sandstorms don't last that long. They don't, but I enjoy them mainly for the fact that the very first mission you do when you're, uh, like, actually there after you get Miller out. Yeah. And you have to, like, go assassinate some dude. Yeah. In that town? Yeah, in that tiny town. Um, I was getting pinned down. Like, I had done very well, but then my suppressor went out because I didn't know that it could run out. Of course. And um, just as soon as like I was getting pinned down and stuff like that, 
there was like maybe like 20 guys because they called backup. Uh, the sandstorm came around as I was hiding, and so they lost me. I busted through a window, grabbed this dude, <laughs> threw him out the window. Nice. Grabbed him again because I was trying to extract him because yeah. I thought I might be able to use him. But it, come to find out, if you extract him, all they do is they kill them there instead of you putting a bullet in their head. Oh, the um, like the important guys, yeah, they have to kill. Yeah. Oh, you can't extract them. Uh, I think you might be able to later, but I think they're just like very. That's lame. I think they're very hard to break, and if they do break, mm. it, but if they don't break after a while, I, I'm not positive how it works. I got you. I haven't seen him on anything. I got you. Um, but uh, so I just ran, grabbed him, and ran. <laughs> got into a ditch, waited for the sandstorm to pass. Nobody knew what happened. That's so great. Do you um, you know, there's a truck that drops by that town. One time, I cleared a town out, and that truck dropped by, and I was like, I wonder where it goes. So I hopped in the back and followed them around. You can hop in the back of trucks? Yes, you can. If you go, then you go prone. What? You just hide back there, and they'll just drive around. Oh, what? I need to try that. It's so great. And when, so, like, he drove me around for a little bit, and I was like, this is boring. So when, when they drove away from, like, a, a guard post, I popped up in the back. They can't see me because there's, like, you know, crates back there. Yeah. I popped a few shells in the back of both their heads. Nice. It was, it was great. Yeah. Um, I was doing this assassination mission, and uh, I killed, like, a sniper in a sniper tower and was about to snipe this. The guy I was supposed to do because he was coming down in a uh, what are the, jeep. Yeah. And I just could not get a shot off on this dude. Like, I, I didn't fire yet, but I just could not align it. Yeah. I got the most BA sniper shot I've ever gotten. Like, just, I was like, you know what, screw it. And just, like, slung my sniper rifle and got a headshot right on him. Nice. It was so cool. I nice. felt I felt like I deserved, like I had earned my place on Wanted. <laughs> you know, the movie with the current yeah. bullets. Oh, yeah. I still haven't gotten the hang of how to lead a shot in that game. Um... I've gotten decent at it. I'm not great. It's different than most games. There's, I mean, unlike most games, there's um fire time. Like, yeah, yeah. The bullet goes through the air for a certain amount of time. So you have to lead it, but like I still haven't got, I haven't quite gotten because you know I do lead it, but for most games, there's this usual like general spot where I'm usually pretty good at hitting. Yeah, but this one seems a little different than most. It's because in most games, it's not like a, the time is not as much. Yeah, it's more like. This is where the bullet's gonna hit, but they're moving, so you have to like lead ahead. Whereas, yeah, like I fired a gun at a dude who's standing still, and then him ducked down like, like a half a second after I fired the gun, and it, he dodged the bullet. Like I see, so it's like it physically the, the bullet physically travels in the game. Yes, I see. Well, I'll have, I'll have to look at that. It's pretty cool. And then I've also had I've been shooting at one dude, and some dude just happened to walk right in front of the bullet. Nice. Got them both. Nice. <laughs> Shooting in that game is really satisfactory. It is. Like bullets hitting things. Like I said, like we talked about that one episode, the, you, the sound it makes when it blows the back of their skull uh, out. Yeah. Yeah, it's such, that game is so great. But at the same time, I feel like, like when I have like open firefights, I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, I feel like I'm not playing the game properly. Exactly. I feel like I'm like taking the easy way, you know? Yeah. Although the other day I was trying to just kill some time. So, uh, I just like made like man snake, <laughs> man snake. Yeah, like uh, he went like the, you, did you know for your like camos and stuff like that you can choose like there's um scarf standard naked, naked is your just you don't have a shirt on. Yeah, and scarf you obviously have a scarf on. Okay. Uh, so Wait, I, you, are you like are your pants and just a scarf? No, you can't. That'd be pretty. Funny oh, though. that'd be pretty. That'd be pretty fantastic. No, be like a French assassin. I know. I would rock that all the time. <laughs> no, but uh. So I made him in the man snake, as I call him. He had like uh, a grenade launcher. No, I'm sorry, not a grenade. Uh, a rocket launcher, and like a sh- uh, double barrel shotgun. It's like super off. manly snake. Exactly. Nice. And I uh, had like no shirt on, walking around <laughs> like in, in Africa, just blowing people's faces <laughs> off with a shotgun. Fantastic. It was so fun, and then I got lit up. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I guess shootout shootouts in that game. I just feel wrong. I feel like ah, oh, this. Sh- I feel like you know, there's a great. I feel like in, in in every in every you know location, there's a way to take out everyone without being spotted. I've I've been in like missions where like since I had to replay a lot of them, mm. I went through the first time and just didn't do very well on it, and took like everybody out because they had I had to, 
versus like other times where I've gone and played the mission and killed. I only like tranquilized like three people, got yeah. what I needed to do, and left. Yeah, I mean, so it it's really cool to see like the different options that they give you, and that game gives you a lot of options. Yeah, like there there's suppo- there's supposedly ways where you can go around without like not even tranking somebody. Yeah. It's just, it's just a matter of finding it though. Yeah. It's just that that box is so OP. Is it? I, I haven't used it. Oh my gosh, dude. You have got to use the box. Um it was the mission right before you see your uh big bad dude get grabbed by a robot. Yeah. It was doing that mission and I had to do, do that mission like six times. Or it wasn't that mission, I'm sorry. There's another mission, it's that area. There's another mission you do in that area. The temple? Yeah. The underground temple. Yeah, that place is a pain in the butt to sneak in. Yeah. Oh, you have to kill everybody, basically. You have to? Basically. All I, right. The only way I've found that you can do it is the way I'm about to say. That's the only way I did. Is the box, what I, what I would do is I would just like walk up to somebody and just be walking around or whatever. Yeah. And they'd see a moving box and be like, what is this? And so they'd walk up to me and I'd just choke them out. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'd pop out the box and choke them out. Or, Surprise. Or when I only had one box left, what I would do is I'd just pop up and put one bullet right between the eyes. Wait, you do have a limited amount of boxes? I think you have like five, four or five. That's 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 pretty handy. Have some boxes laying around. Exactly, yeah. I have yet to use it. I've also yet to need the chicken hat. I refuse to use the chicken hat. <laughs> you out of pride. I've I've had I've had it offered to me one time and it was the one time I'm talking about right now. Yeah. Yeah. That that's this is when I use the box. I use the box to sneak up to each one of the tanks and put the C four on there and Nice. C four does nothing. <laughs> I've yet to run into a tank, but the helicopters. I I actually just recently did a mission where uh I had to just con- I had to destroy like seven tanks. It's way easier than you think it is. Is it? Yeah. See, I don't know how to deal with helicopters. So I was doing the mission where like the big guy at the robot picks you up. I was doing that one, yeah. and there's a helicopter that patrols that ravine, right? Yeah. So I was like, I don't know how to deal with this helicopter. So I call in my helicopter that hopefully they fight. No, that helicopter creamed my helicopter. <laughs> no, um, an LMG can take a helicopter out so quickly. Really? With one clip, like not even a clip in an LMG. Nice. I'll have to, I'll have to research that. There are so many things to research. Yeah. I feel um, like slightly overwhelmed by it. Yeah, but LMGs are super overpowered and they're a lot of fun if you don't really care about being loud. I gotcha. Well, I'm like hypersensitive to it. Yeah, I, I'm trying to do it like like Snake would do it. Like I'm trying to role play it a little bit. Yeah. Did you did when you first played? Did you find Snake to be big uneasily boss. loud? I mean, Big Boss. Yeah, yes. big, wait. When he walks and stuff, it sounds like he's like playing a trumpet. Like it's he's like, he like and when he, when he dives, like big thud, and then when he runs, bomb, bomb, bomb. Oh bom, yes, bom. yes. It's like, it's super unsettling. Although it's a really cool run animation. I it really think. is. I, I feel like I'm running really fast. I feel like I feel like it's chaotic a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of like you shouldn't be doing this, but I need to do this. Yes, exactly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that was uh, a lot of fun. I finally got to Africa. I'm excited to get there. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, the first mission there is not too fun. I finally also started getting some. Uh, well, actually, it's, it's it's a decent mission. I, I took out like 40 people. Yeah. Um. I finally learned how to use my prosthetic arm to my advantage. Effectively? Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's melee only, right? There's not like a spring load like contraption in there that shoots darts or something? There is later the rocket arm. The rocket arm? Yep. That I, sounds awesome. It's later in the game. I've only seen it in previews for uh, multiplayer. Yeah. But uh, you can like shoot your arm out and it'll knock people out. That's really handy. Yeah. Speaking of multiplayer real quick, just... Uh, the uh multiplayer uh, it hasn't it's coming out like next month or something like that I don't know when it's coming out for Metal Gear yeah or, is it, it didn't come out when the game came out no that's um, weird it, actually it might not, might not be next month it might be this month um but yeah it is this month but um you can uh, have like character plays and you can play as like Ocelot and stuff yeah Ocelot uh does dual revolvers that sounds that awesome. can ricochet oh so like if like you're hiding behind like you're hiding behind something. Yeah. But there's a wall. I can bounce the bullet off to hit you. <laughs> nice. It's really cool. That sounds like it's going to be tough, though. But yeah. you know you're going to run into people who know how to do that. I, from what it seems like, 
it's not necessarily a direct angle. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just kind of like maybe, maybe it bounces in like a convenient angle to hit people. Exactly. Like I see. You're hiding behind there. I'm shooting at this wall. Obviously, to bounce it off the wall and hit you, it's yeah. gonna hit you. Okay. Okay. That kind of makes sense. But that's such a good game. All my computer to work. Darn it. Come on, dude. Get it working. I need to get working. But yeah. Okay. T- tonight, you should go download Here's the Storm and we should play together. Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. I would really look forward to that. That would really mean a lot to me. If, if not today, almost definitely tomorrow we can do that. I'll do that. Okay. We should do that. We should do that. All right. Is that it? That's it for me. All right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for uh, listening to our humble podcast. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I mean, like we say every time, every view counts. Every view counts. Yeah. It's great. It's fantastic. Thank you to everyone. Um, You can contact the show with the email collegegamersshow at gmail.com. Big breath. Um, and you can uh, follow me on Twitter at BlueCows with a Z, B-L-U-E-C-O-W-Z. Tash finally got a Twitter. No thanks to you, Mike, because you did not remind me. Yeah, whatever. Um, you guys can follow me at on Twitter at TaftFaust8. TaftFaust8 what? That's it. That's it? That's it. No joke there? Nope. Oh, uh, when it comes to naming, I am super bland because I, I feel like later in life, if I ever need to do something with my life... I don't want to have some stupid, like, really ridiculous name. Not saying Blue Cow is, but, no. you know, just like, I don't want to have something When a business weird. asks for an email, you don't want to be like, uh, my name is um Bookmark78? Yeah, exactly. I see. I gotcha. Well, yes, I think that's it for this week. I hope everyone's gaming. It goes gamingly awesome. I need some handy thing to say at the end of the show. We need to get a catchphrase. We do need a catchphrase. So, and yeah. Got, hey, Twitter competition. Give, best, give us a catchphrase. Best catchphrase. No actual throwing involved, please. Yeah, none. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time. Bye bye. Later. Blue Cow Radio. <laughs>